my fellow Americans, we got them. Or more specifically, Russia's got them because you can't rely on the <clears throat> the FBI or the uh, you know the intelligence services of the United States to protect Americans. It's up for some reason to Russia to protect one American in particular, Tucker Carlson, who recently visited that country uh, to interview Mr. Vladimir Putin. Uh, I discussed the interview at the time. I didn't. Uh, I mean, it was kind of interesting. Um, wasn't getting a whole lot out of it. I don't think. Uh, I don't think Mr. Putin is. Uh, is exactly the most uh, compelling speaker. But I won't get into that again. And th- anyway, well, th- that's not the issue here. The issue here is that Tucker was in Russia um, to interview Mr. Putin, and uh, the Russian authorities claim that they have arrested a man who attempted to assassinate Tucker Carlson uh, on behalf of the Ukrainian government. Uh, I guess th- they've released pictures of what they claim is a bomb, um, again, this is all alleged. He hasn't been convicted of anything. And, uh, you know, uh, Russian Russian judicial system, you know, like America, uh, not 100% trustworthy. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, it's sad that I have to say like America these days, but frankly, we have fallen that far. Russia is not as bad as they were in the 1930s, and the United States is um, worse than ever when it comes to show trials. So we've kind of met in the middle. And so anyway, they claim that this guy, um, who is a Russian, he's not, a, you know, he's not uh, some foreigner, he's a Russian guy, who attempted to assassinate Tucker Carlson in uh, the parking garage for the Four Seasons where Tucker was staying. Honestly, I'm surprised that the Four Seasons is still operating in Moscow. I would think that, you know, every Western brand would have pulled out by now. But I guess the Four Seasons is still operating their hotel. They've not decided to give up and just, you know, abandon their assets like McDonald's did. Um, so anyway, this guy was, I guess, staked out according, according to the Russians uh, in uh, this parking garage. Um, and they caught him and he confessed to, to what he was up to. And I guess he was offered $4,000 by Ukraine in order to... Uh, kill Tucker. That seems like a pretty small reward, but I, I don't know. Maybe in Russia that's a lot of money, or maybe having someone killed just isn't uh, isn't that big of a deal. Maybe hitmen are just cheap. Uh, but either way, thankfully the plan uh, did not go off, and Tucker is still with us. Now I'm sure a lot of people in the West will just dismiss this outright and say, "Oh, well, this is just Russia trying to make Tucker look like a victim." And try to make Ukraine look bad. And well, yes, I would say that Russia has an incentive to try and make Ukraine look bad. Uh, I think that this story is plausible because uh, Ukraine makes themselves look bad by putting Tucker, among many other Americans, on their national kill list. You know, it's not a most wanted list. It's a kill list. And these people uh, have been ordered uh, dead, you know, by the Ukrainian government. There are many Americans like uh, Rand Paul and... Uh, I think even even some pretty obscure people like Jackson Henkel, who, well, I, I guess with the with the the Gaza war, um, I think Jackson's gained a pretty big Twitter account. But I mean, I, I, Jackson was put on the kill list. Actually, now that I think about it, is he not on YouTube anymore? I've never seen any of his stuff in in months and months because I used to occasionally watch his streams. But he that's all he was. He was a live streamer on YouTube. <laughs> You know, he was somebody who, he was like a guest on Jimmy Dore. This is a nobody um, when they put him on uh, the Ukrainian kill list. And sure, now he's a big pro-Palestine influencer, but uh, <laughs> this is the this is the level of pettiness um, that uh, you get from the Zelensky regime. They want to assassinate uh, social media trolls. And so, yeah. It's very believable that they would offer someone $4,000 to kill Tucker Carlson because I think they think that it would be worth it to them. Or at at the very least, you know, it's vengeance. And if you ask me, you know, would the Russians do the same thing to uh, some kind of like uh, liberal American journalist? Like, I don't know, uh, someone really, really boring. Um, Gosh, who even is there these days? Uh, Jake Tapper? Uh, Kinda? 
I don't know. There's no there's no liberal equivalent of Tucker, but they, let's just say Jake Tapper flies to Moscow uh, or something, or flies to Kiev, let's say, um, and a, 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 a Ukrainian assassin working for the Russian government tries to kill Jake Tapper. Is that super likely? Uh, no, I don't think so, because I don't think that Russia really gains much out of that. Um, they're rational actors, and I don't think that the Russians would go around assassinating Americans uh, just because they say mean things about them. After all, Putin has taken uh, many hostile interviews from American journalists over the years. Um, Tucker, I think, is the first uh, American journalist in probably a decade uh, that has uh, been kind of cordial with him and not super combative. Although I think Tucker um, did push him in certain areas, Putin, I think, was much more aggressive towards Tucker uh, than Tucker was aggressive towards him. But I'm not here to discuss the interview. Anyway, uh, getting back to that, I don't think that Russia gains anything uh, if they assassinate American journalists. Um, and Ukraine doesn't get anything out of it either. If Tucker's dead. Uh, I don't think that that is going to suddenly turn the war around for Ukraine. Uh, but the difference is, is that the, the Ukrainian uh, regime and its supporters uh, are, much, are, are much less, I think, cold and calculating, like the Russians, and uh, much more vindictive, which they share in common with the West. That is a very common trait of the West. They believe in um, you know, this idea of punitive violence. They don't believe in violence as a tool to just achieve their political goals, which in and of itself is terrorism. I mean, it's bad enough. Uh, but, you know, almost every government around, actually every single government around the world believes in using violence to achieve political goals. Uh, that is what a government does by definition. But Western governments, including the government in Kiev, which I think is very Western in its orientation in this sense, um, believes in using violence on a grand scale in a much more a uh, personal sense. A good example, I think, would be the defenses that I heard for the, uh, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki growing up. You know, nowadays, the defense for it is that uh, um, it brought about a quicker end of the war and that if the, the U.S. hadn't done that, you know, they would have had to do a ground invasion of Japan, which would have killed far more people. And that actually nuking two Japanese cities was a, an act of mercy. But traditionally, the um, defense for the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki was that they had it coming. That the Japs hit us first, and so we hit back much harder in order to teach them the lesson that you don't F with America. And people... Uh, still said this uh, in the 2000s, around that same time, uh, about the Iraq War. Well, you know, those that Saddam blew up our towers, and so, you know, he kills 3,000 of ours, and we kill 1 million of his. And that's just what you do. You have to, in the words of Jonah Goldberg, you have to go and, like, um, uh, knock over a third world country every few years just to remind the world who's boss. And Ukraine has that same sort of mentality. It is an unforgivable sin, the sorts of things that Tucker has said and believes. And so he must be slain in order to set an example, in order to teach the population of the West what happens when you cross Kiev. And so uh, to close things out here, obviously I do not know 100% if this is true. Uh, but uh, for all the reasons I've stated, I think it's at least plausible. And but at the end of the day, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, the plot, if it really existed, failed, uh, and the kill list is still active. Ukraine still wants Americans dead. They've already killed Gonzalo Lira. <laughs> it's pretty. It, it's not a stretch to think that they would try and kill Tucker. In fact, I think Tucker has a much bigger target on his back than Gonzalo ever did. Uh, Gonzalo was more a, uh, a murder of convenience. It was much easier for them to go after him since he lived in Ukraine and uh, was never 
it didn't get out in time, which I think I think everyone knew at the time when Gonzalo wasn't getting out that uh, it wouldn't end well for him. At some point, uh, the Yuknats were going to catch up with him, and that's exactly what happened. And so after murdering Gonzalo and the entire West, excusing it and saying uh, that it was justified, um, I have absolutely no trouble believing that Ukraine could have ordered uh, this man to bring about Tucker's death and that the Western media would have justified it had it gone off without a hitch. So with that said, I will see you folks back here in the next one.